The last time that I fiddled with a rotary race car, I put it in the absolutely epic 787B. And I'm pretty proud with how it turned out. It's a little bit wild to handle, but I freaking love it. And since I did this one, well, there's been a few changes. First, you'll notice that there's no turbo gauge here. And two, you'll notice that it's got actually the right amount of power. And you'll see that it redlines at the full power here. If I was to go in, I actually have two different types of ECU. So under engine, engine management, we've got a qualifying and an endurance race. So the endurance actually has the smaller amount of power. I wonder what's going to happen to my replay. Is this going to stuff up if I do this mid... No, nope, it won't let me do it. Okay, you get the idea. But I put a lot of effort into this hole. Let me show you one other thing. If we turn around and go into the engine bay, I mold up a mock little rotary engine here. And I, I, I'm, it, it's such a shame to only use this in one vehicle. But would you know it? It seems that it only ever got used in one other vehicle. And this is an IMSA. If you remember, the 787B's rotary ended up getting itself banned by Le Mans. IMSA, on the other hand, seemed to really love the rotary. It was actually doing pretty well, which once again, leads us back to this big boy. A little bit less downforce, a lot less drag, it's gonna be harder to control, and it's going to be a hell of a lot faster. What could go wrong? How hard can it be? Unfortunately, the same body for the 787B is really the only body that works for this one as well. The downside is, is it's a hell of a lot smoother. There's just no body that really quite does this. So, Oh, we're gonna have to work with it. Not too concerned about this car having many fans as well, as it actually is quite the failure. I mean, literally, this is the entire blurb for its racing history. That's it. One year. And it didn't even do very well. Like, it failed so poorly, but was never given more of a chance to succeed. Really disappointing. We're gonna try to match this as best as possible. I believe the whole thing was made out of carbon fiber. When it comes to our engine choice though, pretty much all we have to do is make sure we got a similar amount of power and about 180 kilos of weight. Shouldn't be too hard. Go something like a V6, nice and compact, and then find out that it's too tall. Okay, so a 90 degree V6 instead. We also wanna match our RPM, which is somewhere around 11,000. Our internals are not having any of it though. It really wants me to put on more ballast, but I don't want to because I want this engine to rev freely and really super fast. So how about a V8? Mm, that doesn't like it either. I wonder if we drop, th okay, there we go. And we're still actually underweight, so we can go a little bit heavier. V12, nope, too big. All right, we make it a little bit smaller. It seems that the V12 is within weight and also revs pretty nicely. So we have the right amount of RPM, I have close enough weight, but we don't have really, unfortunately, seemingly, enough power. Uh, do they nerf naturally aspirated engines? Because this does not seem right. I mean, I could have made the year newer, but it doesn't... Hmm, something's weird. Whatever, it doesn't particularly matter too much. Now we're just gonna shape the body a little bit, so bring that in, I think. God, this thing is a lot smoother. So it has a very gentle line all the way along, bottoming out somewhere around the side of the driver. So we can drop that down. That looks fairly good. The nose comes out fairly long, so we can lengthen that out a bit. There's a fairly large air dam sort of area for extra cooling. So this can go up a bit. No, I can't. Okay, well, still got that very indicative fall off behind the rear wheel. And it also seems a lot shorter than this. So let's go, there we go, perfect. And then this comes up, but you'll notice the bodywork only stops at about midway through the wheel. Luckily, however, this can move up. Okay, well, that's apparently as far as it moves up, but that's pretty close. I think that's about as close as we're going to get. I might drop that down for a little bit of extra. Yeah, once I drop the suspension, I think it'll be good. We're going to try to match that very high flake sort of color. It looks close. I might maybe edit this a little bit in Blender afterwards. In fact, actually, you know what? I'm not going to make this delivery and automation for once. There's way too much detail going on here. I think I'm going to do a little bit of a tutorial maybe on how to do it in Blender. Here's hoping we have time and the video doesn't go for two hours. I suppose this thing doesn't have something a little bit more complicated than manual. Or maybe it does. And maybe just the documentation is really bad. Either way, five speed. We unfortunately don't seem to have a lot of information on the tire type. I mean, most of the stuff here is just pictures and not actual information. There's this, but not a whole lot of help here either. We have this picture. 
can we maybe zoom in and see something? Uh, 365? 720? Perfect. 365 and 720. That's either 16 or 18. Suppose we'll do it by eye. It looks bigger than 16. It could be 18. Okay. I think that's all the information we got for us, huh? Screw it. Whatever. We'll just run by ears. Probably like a 245 or something. Uh, it's fine. Now, as I stated, there is very little information on the sorts of aerodynamics that this has. But we're going to try at the least to give this thing good downforce and maybe just make it a little bit less than the 787B. I mean, I've resulted to looking at chat GPT. Um, it doesn't really give me an answer, much like the rest of the internet doesn't give me an answer either. Now that we're at this stage, we can dump it on its arm. Oh, okay, it wants to be really tall. I feel as if, much like the last race cars, we might make the wheels asymmetrical and go a little bit smaller on the front. This is not going to be as wide anyway. I think that works. Then over in advanced trim settings, we drop this thing down a lot. Like a lot, a lot. Is there a morph to bring this lower? Nope, only to bring it higher. Great. That's exactly what I need. God damn it. Uh, I suppose I can fix actually the loweredness of this a little bit in Blender, maybe? We'll see. I think we're also gonna glow, glow, glow? Go the closed headlight, looked. Looked? Oh my God. What is happening to my brain? Ah. Mm. Close enough. Next is the big front grille and maybe the lip section. Luckily, I've got my proper modified grille in here. Stretch you out to kind of just be in line with the headlight. Perfect. Then we're gonna chop off the bottom with a little bit of cutout, close enough. Then this very short protruding lip that goes into having this section here. I do have some generic ones. Unfortunately, they're a little too rounded. Then we think, no. Then I suppose a 3D fixture will have to do it. And then make a black plastic, perfect. Next is that little weird lip thing and it doesn't work. Frick. Near enough is good enough though. Then we got a bunch of vents here. I have the perfect unreleased mod for that as well. Eh. There we go. As for these canards, I think we're gonna cheat a little bit. Got some wings here and plop them in. The side now is gonna be the, the, the really big tricky part. There's no real shape that fits that exactly. The closest might be this mod but it doesn't really seem to have the right feel. It's a little too sharp. And it also, yeah, wraps around the top. So instead, I think I'm gonna use maybe this. Oh, this is very weird. Then it goes super deep. Oh, that is, that is very strange. Now, there is a slight possibility that some of you may be eagle-eyed enough to notice that this is actually slipping into the wheel well. Luckily for us, we could put cutouts on here. Yay! Put it on the top layer and perfect. Also, the purpose of me brushing up on my livery skills in Blender is for that Le Mans 24 hour race that's happening in April. Get hyped, it's totally happening and it's a real thing. And it's probably actually going to be terrible, but I want to do it anyway. It's not great, but I think it'll do. I might want to maybe do these wheels now. Do we have anything like that? Oh, this is looking pretty close. I mean, it does have lugs as opposed to a center lock, but it's close enough. Actually, you know what? These look very good as well. Center lock, three piece wheel, perfect. We now have this swooping body line, which is gonna be incredibly hard to replicate. I do have this one mod, however, that I found that might do what we want if I look at it right. Oh, yeah, that's getting pretty darn close. Ugh. And with this, we can also get that lower side look that we want, but apparently not as low as we actually want. But now we're gonna try to cut out a section here. This isn't working out quite how I'd like it, but it'll do. The next thing is this huge ostentatious intake. And for that, we can grab one of these doodads. Now maybe looking at that going, that doesn't look like it at all. If we stretch it out, however, does it look the part now? The exhaust is fairly simple. We use some sort of vent maybe. I look like this shape. No, it's more like a triangle. This actually fits the bill pretty close. I should probably also set this to single because it does only come out one side. And we're gonna place you in, we're actually gonna 3D place you, go exactly like that. 
noise. Then the absolutely ginormous rear wing. I think it's fantastically huge. We actually have, I think, some F1 wings that some people have made. I think fit quite well, like this. Pop you right there, stretch your way out, make you a sick boy, and then make you all black. Now to do this, that's a pretty peculiar way of having it. Apparently it's painted black, but if we've, oh, uh, that does everything. Come on, fine. Okay, let's grab some cutaway. Then three cutouts. Yeah, that's close enough. I wonder if this is going to handle any good. I haven't done any handling stuff yet, so let's get onto that. First with aerodynamics, let's give that a quick re-kick here. And... Okay, that's not looking too bad. Quick look at the 787B that we made. It was about 700 kilo, or just shy of 700 kilos in the rear. So let's aim for like five or 600. And I'm not gonna get there by just turning up the downforce. I think we're gonna have to hide some wings because we also want to have a higher top speed than the other one, which is around 256 miles per hour. Put a simple little one in here. Now, previously, if you had been following my videos, you know that I used to make really huge wings. That's with the old way that automation used to do their wings in aerodynamics when it would export to BMNG. Now it doesn't matter what the wing is, where it is, what size it, well, actually where it is does matter, but the size of it basically does not matter. So I can put this in here and then make it easy witsy and has no no effect on anything. Then we have the self though now is generating all of its extra downforce and giving us almost 500. Nice. Let's just duplicate that and put another one kind of about here. And we may as well paint it invisible. We don't want to be able to see it. And now we should be creating a lot better numbers. Good. This is looking fairly nice. Well, what about our top speed? It reckons, well, you know what? We're not generating enough power yet. But I reckon we'll reach 348 kilometers an hour, which is 216 miles per hour. The 787B did 258, which is 400 kilometers an hour. Oh God. Let's create another engine. It doesn't matter the weight of it. We just want to be able to have the same sort of speed. And with a simulated similar engine, oh, our top speed is a lot higher now. Uh, it reckons, then our top speed is 405, which is a little bit short because we do want to go a little bit faster. And now if we come in here and reduce our wing amount, it will generate more downforce at lower wing angles, which should give us less drag. We're also generating way too much downforce. So actually, maybe we're generating the right amount of downforce. I feel as if I did do the 787B dirty by not giving it a whole lot. And now our top speed is up to 480. Now with considerably less wing angle, we are going 424. With a now revised 418 kilometers an hour, I think we're good. And a zero to 100 of 2.7 seconds, I love it. Let's now switch back to the previous engine, just to make sure that all of our numbers are correct. So I reckon with like the lesser power, I reckon we'll do around here. 158, eh. We should probably also make the suspension a little bit stiffer to stop this bottoming out issue. So let's bump up the spring stiffness to be above race. And now that these are even, we're gonna bump these up. That's looking fairly good. Aerodynamics is now a little bit different. And our top speed is, oh yeah, that's down. Yeah, obviously, because of the <laughs> difference in the engine. I wonder if that changed anything now that it won't be bottoming out quite so much. A minute 58, exactly the same. It also records we're still going to be bottoming out. Frick. All right, here's my cheat. Use progressive springs. Oh my God, it still says we're bottoming out. Oh, but now that we bumped the suspension all the way up, it's gone. Good. Okay, fantastic. Has that changed the numbers? 158.65? And no. 0 0.02 of a sec. Great. <laughs> oh, crab apples. It looks like the exhaust didn't export quite correctly. Besides, we wanted to come out the side. That's easy fix though. The weird thing is, is there's two lots of exhaust coming out of here when there should only be one. And then there's this, uh, whatever. We haven't put the audio in yet, but we're gonna give it a bit of a try. It's a little bit weak off the line. Sounds good. Handle's actually pretty good, a little bit understeery. I feel like we could do a little bit more on the front, but I reckon we could just play with arrow and beam and G to fix that. That's pretty good. Now I did say that I was gonna do livery work, 
uh, in Blender, but I think this video might go on a little bit too long, maybe. So instead, what I'll do is I'll make that a secondary video that'll uh, be up as its own thing, so then this one doesn't go on too long. And if you want to see that one, well, I mean, uh, make sure you're subscribed. For those people that aren't subscribed, how many subscribers do you think I have? And now go check. And now tell me whether you think I deserve more, because I, I think I deserve more. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> getting back to this car, I think it's pretty good. It's looking the, oh, it's very jiggly. The collision mesh should be fine, however. Hmm, weird. I know how to do a proper test. We should be able to stick in so some stronger internals and then nitrous and then just go like a 200 shot and see what happens because that's about what we were getting. Unfortunately, we can only fit a small bottle in, but that'll do. 200 kilowatt shot should be enough to get us the right amount of power and turn it on. Well, it's not a huge amount faster. Oh, because I haven't... Okay, it's probably only set up to go on like second gear or whatever. Let's switch that to adjustable shot and bring this down to first gear. And bring that up to about 200 kilowatts. And then bring the RPM down. Let's hope this doesn't kill the engine. Oh, that is a lot faster already. Oh my goodness. Okay, it's a little bit hard to control. Oh, okay. So there is... A fair chunk of understeer. A lot of understeer. I feel that this thing would do a lot better to have a lot more front arrow. I think... Uh, there's a slight bit of the automation was lying to me with the downforce numbers. But we can also see that that nitrous is also running really low. Let's line it up. Reset the amount of nitrous we have. And now we're going to see what sort of top speed we reach and see how this thing handles at speed. So we can be able to tell whether it's high speed understeer or low speed understeer. Low speed will mean we need more mechanical grip. Getting a good top speed. And even at high speeds, we're understeering. Oh, goodness. But we're about 300 and something kilometers an hour. Looks like we're a bit short. We're also short on horsepower. We're going to the full length. We should be getting somewhere around 900. So let's add an extra 100 kilowatts on here. There, 900. But the torque here is just demonstrous. So I think we're going to increase the RPM so then it doesn't like blow the engine out. And now bring it down. Oh, this thing is hard to keep on the power now, but it's doing well. OK, only about 300 kilometers an hour, so we're not reaching the 400 uh, and lots of understeer. Frick. Okay, um, yeah, I think, let's go get the other engine. We've got this, the first thing we're going to do is drag that in, done. Then under the vehicle, we're going to grab our engine, which has all of the stuff we want. Now if we go into here, nope, control L. Okay, the, yep, okay. And now we have, okay, uh... Oh, it's still called the 2.8 liter V6. Oh, well, that's fine then. Yeah, let's go, let's go the V6. It's got the sounds and it's not got the mesh. It should have it. This was in here. Yeah. What the hell? Oh, you know what as well? We're probably missing the materials from it. I don't remember which materials file it is, so we're going to bring both of them in. And we don't have the other engine mesh, which is unfortunate. Oh, I know why. Because we also need to grab the engine structure from here and drag you in. And there we go, 7B, 8Z, uh, okay, yeah, we're gonna have to change the names of these. Uh, next is engine mesh is that engine mesh, good, and then the exhaust is that exhaust, and the exhaust mesh is the proper exhaust mesh, and good, our exhaust is basically perfect. Now we're gonna select this, overwrite, open the containing folder, open up the folder that the a vehicle is in, and we're just going to drag the PC in there and replace that. And now whenever we open up this vehicle, it'll open up with this version, where it's got the exhaust, everything. That, that's just a simple trick. If you do any sort of tuning and you want it to be shareable like that, yeah, basically just drag it in. I think that's pretty epic. You know what we don't need now? We don't, we do, you don't need that nitrous no more. Turn you off. I think I'm now going to go record the livery bit, and I'll be back in a second to maybe do some hot lapping with this. What follows is a brief construction montage. 
We hope you enjoyed this brief construction montage. Well, I made the tutorial. It's for you, it's been like a split second for me. It's been many hours and a lot of hair pulled out because beam and G and materials don't get along very well. Though this is the skin. And I mean, it's a lot darker now. It's not come out exactly right, but I am happy enough. For now, at least, I, I am uh, pretty happy with this. Oh, oh, the thing is really soft line. It does, I've noticed, spawn with the correct engine, which is uh, how I told you to do that earlier. This is pretty good. My brain is actually pretty dead after doing all of that. Uh, I want to see what this will do around the sort of map that they race in Imza. One of the biggest races is the 24 hours of Daytona where Imza would like to race. I mean, pretty sure this is where Imza raced. I can actually read through the entirety of the racing history to find out where it raced, which is literally just that long. Damn it. They skipped the 24 hours of Daytona. That's unfortunate because in the motorsport playground, this one here is actually meant to be very close to Daytona. Comes around here, you go in, you do your infield part, you go around here, you got the bus stop and it comes around again. This is about as much as we got. The other ones being the Grand Prix of Miami, uh, which uh, Miami, which I don't know. Then there's the 12 hours of Sebring. I don't think we have that map. Road Atlanta, which should be cool to have. Ooh, maybe we might get that one day. Then there's things like Lime Rock, Mid Ohio, I don't know, Laguna Seca. That would be fun. I wonder. BMNG Laguna Seca Raceway? Ooh, okay. Yeah, okay, all right, yep, yep, this is what we're doing. Ooh. Laguna Seca. I don't know how good or how bad it is, so we're gonna have to find that out. I don't remember there being a green marshland filled with slime. What I do remember though is the corkscrew. That's pretty epic. Let's give it a try. I should probably go into the livery editor and fix the fact that this thing is very dark. It should be a lot lighter than this. And you know, after spending hours on making the livery, I was a little bit tired. Forgive me for not wanting to go and uh, do that. All right, uh, we should probably also add a little bit of extra front downforce. I remember we were talking about that. Let's see how this thing handles so far. I have noticed that it understeers quite a bit. Also, I do appreciate that this is not just a slapdash mod and that the dirt is actually in fact dirt. Thank you for not being just like the lowest common denominator lazy map maker. I mean, I get it. Thank you for the people that do that, but at least doing this much is a lot nicer. So in tuning, we're not gonna use constant because that's cheating on the front. I think we're gonna add maybe about 50, somewhere maybe 60, 55 kilos on the front, eh, whatever it'll do. Oh, this thing does not like to pull away from the line. Coming down into the first corner, braking. Oh, it feels a lot peppier under brakes now. Turn in is still fairly dull, but it feels like we got a fair decent amount of track. I wonder if, I think maybe if I just add mechanical grip on the front, it'll help with this entirely. Did I tune the brakes at all? Let's see what it's like under brakes. So brake, turn in, you know, it's okay under brakes. So to do this, I think we're going to increase the rear tire pressure up to maybe 26 and a half and see if now the shift in grip is going to help us out. Oh, that thing sucks off the line. But here we go, coming down the front straight. Let's just see if we can do much better on the first corner now. Now, I know the removing grip doesn't seem like the best way to do it, but we're just shifting the grip levels to the other area. Hmm. I feel that we might do a lot better by maybe changing the roll bar as well. Okay, here we go. So let's go front sway bar race, and then we'll do the same to the rear sway bar. Under the tuning menu for our sway bars, these are very light sway bars, by the way. Uh, let's go ahead and make the rear a lot stronger compared to the front. So adding a hundred onto that. And now, well, let's just clutch on this. This thing really doesn't like to move off the line at all. Uh, it's feeling... Okay. Is this thing down on power? It feels a lot slower than the 787B that I made. The one that's like really broken with its materials now for some reason and I, just, I can't seem to figure out why. 
We're doing better. It is turning in a little bit better now. And we're not losing any traction on the exit, so I think we're good there as well. Whoa. Yeah, it's... It could do with a little a bitsy, bitsy bit of tuning. Uh, I want to see what the power torque is, though. Power graph with... The, yeah, torque curve. That's what I was going for. Uh, okay, well, we can get rid of nitrous. We don't need that no more. And, okay, we are generating the right amount of power. 700 horsepower on the nose. Maybe if I go to qualifying spec, this will feel a little bit better. So if we go into engine, under engine management, we can go to qualifying engine specs. And now we'll have the full 11,000 RPM at our disposal. Is the vehicle really heavy, maybe? Let's figure that out. It's about a ton, so it's not light, but it's also not heavy. I feel as if it's maybe a little bit heavier than what it should be. I might go in to automation and re-export this car. Also give it an interior because I just realized I haven't done that either. So maybe a re-export will do it good and uh, we'll reapply the materials, Frick. Back in automation, it shouldn't, doesn't, it doesn't look too bad. Our braking graph, I didn't tune it, but it's actually not too bad. That should be fine. Aerodynamics, it is a little bit understeery, but if we add too much more on the front or reduce it on the rear, it's just gonna oversteer too much. Also, we did actually bring our downforce down a lot. I didn't notice that, whoops. Well, then my ideas of this being more downforcey than the other car, maybe a little bit of a loss. Let's compare it to the 787B that I made. A Little bit sluggish off the line. But coming down, this just feels a little bit better. A little bit nippier, a little bit zippier. Not as good on the brakes. Ah, okay. And really, really spin happy. Oh, God. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Oh. Maybe I should do a time trial between the two. The 787B first, even though I did name it the 7B8B because, I don't know, for some reason I just didn't want to say it was a copy of that even though I was worried. Uh, so because I was worried that people would be like, Oh, well, you got this inaccurate. So I didn't want to make it to be an exact replica. Though I think, you know what? Screw that. I think I did a very good job. There were some mistakes, like uh, the fact that this thing doesn't actually have brake lights and uh, those brake lights are a mistake. Oh, a little bit over the curb there. A little bit wayward, a little bit hard to control. But we're bringing it down now into another braking zone and... Uh, let's try this again. I think we're on turn like four or five or something. Got it braked, but didn't really touch the apex or do it quite right. I am racing on a controller, by the way, so it's not going to be absolutely perfect. Slow down now. This is a usually fairly fast corner. 170 kilometers now through there. Very good. We are going to brake before we reach the peak this time. Oh, yeah, I completely had forgotten how to take that corner properly. Braking wise, at least. Apparently also driving-wise, because that was a pretty atrocious way of doing that. Should be entering wider, but once again I'm on a controller so I don't have the complete finesse. I think this would be really fun with a controller. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I actually updated this mod recently. So go check it on the BMG repository uh, and give it a try. The updated version is just a little bit better all round, but still, you know, maybe not the easiest to drive. So, a 128. Now... For the seven, what was it? Wait, hold on. Delivery's changed. What? Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, let's go in four and then save that. Okay. And pulling, oh, this thing is a lot slower off the line. It feels really slow. Oh, you know what it is? The power difference. Engine management qualifying, please. Now with the same power, we're going to see how this one does instead. So this one feels like it breaks a lot later. So breaking the yeah, okay, it does break a lot later. But I don't want to overshoot corners. You know, it doesn't have any of the tuna had on earlier, but it already feels actually a lot better than before I started to fettle with it in stupid ways. Not great under brakes, I will say. The brake turn in or uh, turn in under braking, not my favorite. Ooh, but it is nice to control so bringing it down now whoa, first time around we got that braking zone right as opposed to with the 78b 
where uh, that one wasn't quite so nice. Get it turned in. Very smooth. Very easy on the power. This car had a lot less drag than the other one, and it was just a more refined version. It's just they started to push the engine maybe a little bit harder than what they probably should have. It's also in a lot hotter environments as well, as opposed to France, which I believe is generally meant to be a lot colder than a lot of American places. And brrr, turn in, please. There we go. Good. Oh dear. Not great. What was it a 128? For the 78B. Oh, I stuffed up the last corner. Oh no, and we're going to be overtime. Damn it, that is just. Okay, yep. If I didn't mess up that last corner, probably would have been fairly on par, actually. This has actually been a pretty cool vehicle. For you though, I will be putting this mod up on the BeamNG repository. It'll take however long it takes to get approved on there. But for now though, I will be thanking my channel members. And that is specifically includes Tehelliman for being a top tier channel member. For the rest of you, I'll catch you all next time. Goodbye.